Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Beaver Creek City Council. Before we get started on the regular agenda this evening, I have a proclamation that I would like to make, and we have a very important date in our history coming up. So I would like to, uh, Deputy Chief Easter to join me and Officer Williams to come up front, please. Gentlemen, I know you were both here at the time and you know what was going on here in our local community, but I do want to issue a proclamation so that everybody can remember that day on September 1st, or so September 11th, sorry. So if I may, I would like to read this. Whereas on September 11th, 2001, terrorists attacked our four civilian air, terrorists hijacked four civilian aircraft, crashed two of them into the towers at the Tra World Trade Center in New York City, and a third into the Pentagon outside Washington, D.C. And whereas the fourth hijacked aircraft crashed in southwest Pennsylvania after passengers tried to take control of the aircraft in order to prevent the hijackers from crashing the aircraft into another very important symbol of our republic and freedom. And whereas today we will commemorate the nearly 3,000 innocent lives lost on September 11, 2001, we pray for the families who carry out their legacies. We honor the unmatched bravery of our nation's first responders. We also commend those in the days and years following the attack who answered the call to serve our country and continue to risk their lives in defense of our nation. And whereas the city of Beaver Creek will forever remember that faithful day through the city's 9-11 memorial. At the center of the memorial is a piece of steel that once located be, was, was lo, once located between the 101st and the 105th floors of the North Tower. The memorial include, also includes two granite pillars, which represent the, trade, the World Trade Center buildings and three panels that bear the names of those who passed. And whereas September 11th will never and should never be just another day in the hearts and minds of all the people of the United States and around the world. I therefore, as mayor of the city of Beaver Creek, join with our community and the nation and call for the national moment of remembrance on the 20th anniversary of September 11th. So wherever every person across the country is called upon to stop and remember all those who lost their lives on that faithful day on September 11, 2001. And gentlemen, I'd like to present this to both of you because I know you were very instrumental in the memorial and in the celebration that we will be having here shortly. So I'd like to present that to you gentlemen. And then I would also like to present you with the microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I won't speak for Chief here, but um, we appreciate the city's dedication to the memorial. Um, in researching what other cities do as far as commemorating the event, I found where some cities don't do anything to some cities having a parade or you know, fireworks or Patriots Day. And uh, we're lucky to be able to share that with our community with the memorial that, we, that the city built and to be able to ref reflect on those that were killed on 9-11 and those that have died since then that, re that responded to 9-11 in New York City. So um, it's a great honor for me to be involved in planning and putting together events for our commemora commemoration and uh, look forward to um, our, our, our ceremony on 9-11. So thank, thank you very much. Again, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the opportunity to recognize the, uh, the anniversary of 9-11. Um, one of the things that holds true to the fire department heart is we were able to send three folks up to that on an initial response that are now retired, all three from the fire department, and we're still very proud of that commitment uh, to that response, and we continue to be part of Ohio Task Force One to uh, respond to other similar emergencies and be, be ready for that as we can for the community. So it is a great honor to join with the community to, uh, to remember the events of September 11th and uh, help continue to prevent those from happening again. Gentlemen, I thank you very much, and I also encourage you and thank you for making sure that we all do remember. Every single year we remember this date, and uh, there is always an event at our memorial on September 11th. We're trying to have a little larger one uh, on each every five years, but there is always a remembrance on the 11th. So thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thank you.
I may, I would like to call this meeting to order. May we have a roll call, please? Council Member Bales. Here. Council Member Curran. Here. Council Member Hewitt. Here. Council Member Garcia. Council Member Schwartz. Here. Vice Mayor Adams. Here. Mayor Stone. Here. I'd like to turn it over now to Vice Mayor Adams for the motion. Move to excuse Council Member Garcia. I'm sorry. Second. I have a motion and a second to excuse Council Member Garcia. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Now I'd like to turn it over to Vice Mayor Adams. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would please continue standing. Uh, there's been several issues that's faced our world in the last couple of months. Uh, major issues, the earthquake in Haiti where 2,200 people, over 2,200 people have been killed. Uh, the floods in Tennessee where over 20 people have been, are known dead now, over 50 missing. The hurricanes in the Northeast, uh, the crisis at the southern border, uh, the ongoing coronas, coronavirus uh, concern, and really what's been a very disheartening event in Afghanistan. Uh, I don't want to get into the politics of this, but I would ask that we all spend some time in, in silent prayer uh, for the troops and the people that are going to be left behind there, because the women and children especially are going to be living in a totally different world than they've lived in for the last 20 years. So if you would join me just in a moment of silent prayer and uh, silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have an agenda before us this evening. Do we have any uh, changes? Will we approve the agenda, Your Honor? Uh, one second, please. Mr. Maybe. Mayor, I'd move to amend the agenda by moving the presentation section to follow the approval of the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second to amend the uh, agenda, moving the presentations down. Uh, following number five, so it'd be five A, five B rather. Uh, any other comments? Will we approve the amended agenda. All right. Second. We'll take a fir first. We'll take a vote on the proposed amendment uh, changes. All in favor of the changes, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Now I have your motion to approve the amended agenda. I have a second over here. Yes. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So, first is the approval of the minutes for August 9th, 2021. Any changes? Any motions? Move to approve the uh, minutes of the meeting of August. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from August 9, 2021, as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Abstentions? Motion carries. Now we have some very special presentations or, of people that would like to speak to us this evening. And we're going to start off with the Auditor of State's Office, uh, Mr. Joseph Brandt. All right. It is great to be here again in the... Uh, City of Beaver Creek, on behalf of Auditor State, Keith Faber, to present the Auditor State Award with distinction. As you guys know, this award puts the uh, City of Beaver Creek in a very select group. The Auditor State's office audits nearly 6,000 entities, and only about 4% of these entities are even eligible for this award. The Auditor State Award is presented to the local governments and school districts upon the completion of the financial audit that meet the following criteria. And I always like to read this criteria for the clean audit report so everyone kind of knows what Bill and everybody here had to go through so the public knows what went on. So let me share some of this information with you. The entity must file a financial report with the Auditor's State's Office by a statutory due date without extension on a GAAP accounting system based and prepare a CAFR, which is a Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. The audit report <coughs> must not contain any findings for recoveries, any material citations, any material weaknesses, any significant deficiencies, uniform guidance or single audit findings, or any question costs. 
The management letter must contain no comments related to any ethics referrals, any question costs, any lack of timely annual financial report submission, any bank reconciliation issues, a failure to obtain a timely single audit in accordance with uniform guidance, any finance for recoveries less than $500, or any public meetings or public records issues. The entity shall have no other financial concerns. This award represents the hard work of all the council members here, all the employees of the city of Beaver Creek, and the everything that they do on a daily basis to attain accounting excellence. I want to recognize all the council members here, all the mayor, the city manager, and the all done a fantastic job watching over every dollar here in the city of Beaver Creek. And mayor, if you'd like to come down here and join me. And while he's walking down here, I want to also specifically recognize Mr. Bill Cusera, the finance director, for his exceptional commitment to fiscal integrity. Bill, you want to come on up here and join me too? Yes, sir, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of Auditor State Keith Faber, I'd like to present the Auditor State Award with distinction to the City of Beaver Creek. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Hey, you got to give a speech. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's always a pleasure for you to visit here because you always have such good news. Absolutely, <laughs> I love it. And we uh, love to come visit. And, and I will say a couple of comments. Uh, I want to just uh, uh, thank the state. This is a, a nice award that they give out. Uh, like Joe said, uh, it's uh, very few that get the award with distinction. Uh, we've been lucky enough to get it done out of the last 11 years. The one year we didn't get it, uh, the state was actually auditing us. So that was, uh, I'm not sure what happened there. but. Uh, <laughs> And I think uh, Joe said the most important thing was that this is really a thank you and appreciation for everything that everybody does. It starts with the council all the way down to uh, city manager and all the people that work day to day to make our job and finance easier to uh, make sure everything's accounted for. So I want to thank everybody and include the state for uh, uh, providing an award like this for uh, those that uh, work tirelessly in the back room uh, trying to count every single penny that comes through the door. So thank you. And they do do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. We also have a uh, speaker this evening who uh, would like to talk to us on about Owen's Place, Miss Gussie Jones. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Stone. And before I begin, I would like to just make a comment on the proclamation that you issued. Um, as many of you know, I grew up in New York City. And even though I have been a Beaver Creek resident for one month shy of 50 years, I still have a very big part of my heart that still lives in the city. I was fortunate in that I did not lose any relatives. I had some friends who were impacted significantly by it, but were able to escape with just minor injuries, and so I am very thankful for that. So, and I appreciate more than any of you will ever know how much you do by this proclamation. So. But I did come to talk to, about Owen's Place, and first I would like to thank all of the city council members, the rest of the staff, the township fire department, the police department, and if I've missed anybody, I'm sorry, but you are all wonderful to take time out on a busy Saturday to come and join us for the dedication. Um, it went, I, I told Katie, if I had scripted it, it could not have been better. Um, the kids enjoyed playing. They even, the older athletes even enjoyed, it kept on playing while the ceremony was going on. We finally had to say, okay, they can play and we're gonna go ahead and do it. Um, I hope everybody had an ice cream um, and uh, enjoyed that. The gentleman who runs the ice cream has a marvelous story and if you haven't ever looked up special neat treats, do it, because it's a heartwarming story. Um, Fifteen years ago, we started to talk about a small neighborhood playground that would be accessible for children in wheelchairs and motorized scooters. Fifteen years later, we have the only place in the United States that has a playground, a treehouse village, a shadow play area, and two accessible multi-purpose ball fields on the same site. 
um, Beaver Creek should be proud of everything that it has accomplished. Thank you for your support, for your dedication, and please come and visit the park if you haven't. Thank you. Well, thank you, Gussie, very much. And uh, don't run off, because I'm coming down to the floor. <laughs> And I did leave my wallet back in the car, so <laughs> it's safe to come down and give you a hug. You know, guys, so you've been a fixture here in this community for so many years. And while Owen's place is the most recent, it's certainly not the only thing that you get involved in on a regular basis. So on this occasion, if you decided you wanted to come and thank us, we decided we would thank you as well. So. Members of the Beaver Creek City Council would like to recognize Gussie Jones for all her dedication and hard work throughout the Beaver Creek community. This includes her involvement in Owens Place, an accessible playground and recreation area that offers a full range of physical and emotional needs to children and adults. This Beaver Creek attraction draws national attention to our community. We understand bringing a facility of this magnitude to Beaver Creek was a group effort but at the forefront of it all was Ms. Gussie Jones. Her continued hard work and contributions have helped to provide a vital service to people of the Miami Valley. Beaver Creek City Council would like to say a heartfelt thank you to Gussie Jones for her tenacity, devotion, and commitment toward the Owens Place and our Beaver Creek community. Gussie, this is signed by everybody on council. And don't do that, or I will too, <laughs> but I would like to present that to you. And Thank you very much. Council. Thank you. I did not come here to get something. I came here to give something. We know that all you. too well. Um, I tell people I get a lot of credit because, probably because I grew up in New York City and I have a loud voice and I talk a lot. Um, it is truly a community effort and it has been a wonderful, I have made friends that I never would have made if I did not do this. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of this wonderful community. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Back to business. Isn't it? All right, first uh, is ordinances, resolutions, and PUDs. We'll start off with ordinance 21 16. Ordinance number 21 16, an ordinance by Beaver Creek City Council repealing the current section 76.04A, prohibited standing or parking places of the codified ordinances of the city of Beaver Creek and enacting a new section 76.04A prohibited standing or parking places to the codified <coughs> ordinances of the city of Beaver Creek. Thank you. Chief. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Uh, the current section 76.04A prohibited standing or parking places of the codified ordinances of the city of Beaver Creek does not prohibit parking a vehicle in front of or near a U.S. Postal Service mailbox. As a result, vehicles parked in front of or near mailboxes have prevented mail delivery for some citizens here in the city. Proposed new section 7604A prohibits a vehicle from parking in front of or within 10 feet of a public or private driveway and prohibits parking a vehicle in front of or within 20 feet of a mailbox. And uh, our recommendation is the adoption of this ordinance without any further comment. Well, thank you. This is an ordinance. I do believe we have to have public input. Yes, right? do. Absolutely. So we do have to have public input. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, next pro start step of this ordinance is to allow for a public hearing. Is there anyone present this evening that would like to address council on this ordinance? 
Mr. Lewis. I sent a note in. I looked at this, and I wasn't the one who caught it. Other people have. The 20 feet, uh, if I, I, I wouldn't be able to park in my driveway with that 20 feet because it doesn't say along the road. It says 20 feet within range of the mailbox. In fact, there's not a person in my neighborhood that could comply with that 20 feet because the driveway is right next to the mailbox. Okay, so put the right words in it along the street. And there was also the thing about the fire hydrant in there. I went around my neighborhood, the house right across the street from me. Their fire hydrant is within nine feet of the driveway of the parking of a car. So there's a little dilemma right there. Just a little bit of wording changes, all those issues would go away. But right now, I can't park in my driveway if this passes. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, do we want any comments? Yeah, and probably Chief, Chief uh, and I talked about this. Chief, you want to make a comment? Cause I, yes, sir. You know, uh, um, thank you, Mr. Lewis, for those comments and uh, gives me the opportunity to kind of explain this further and how the, um, the higher advice code works. In reference to the fire hydrants, that is uh, pretty much our parking ordinances word for word with fire hydrants. And the way the higher advice code works, it allows us as officers to enforce the laws on public right-of-ways and public roadways. It does not include private property such as someone's driveway. The only time uh, these would be enforceable is like a handicap parking on a, a private property that's accessible to the public, like a parking lot. So in this case, a uh, vehicle parked in the driveway, this, this ordinance is intended for those vehicles that are literally on the roadway. Someone who is sitting in their driveway within 10 feet of a fire hydrant does not apply because they're on their private property. Someone within 20 feet of a mailbox parked in their driveway does not apply because they are on private property. The reason it's 20 feet is because the typical mail carrier vehicle is anywhere from uh, 12 to 14 feet in length, depending on the vehicle they're driving. That allows the mail carrier to get up in front of the mailbox. If they don't, they don't drop off the mail. You don't get your mail. So these laws are intended for vehicles parked on the public roadway. Uh, if there's going to be any kind of a, a law that we can enforce on private property, it's going to be specific to such as the parking and handicapped places. Um, so those are private property that's accessible to the public. So there's the big difference there is the private property such as someone's driveway. Uh, we don't have any enforceable act there unless there's another type of law being violated. So I think that should answer the question. Okay. Is this, uh, is this an effort to bring our codified ordinances in compliance with the state? No, sir, it is so? not. The okay. state does not have any type of a uh, ordinance or uh, law for parking in front of a mailbox. Um, there's nothing in the Ohio Vice Code that addresses that. That is on our behalf, if I'm, if I'm correct, Mr. McHugh, on that, I believe. That, that, is, yes. that is correct. But there are a number of cities who have similar provisions. Um, you know, certainly, uh, if council were to want us to clarify, because we didn't, there's no change in it with respect to 10 feet of fire hydrant, but you know, you'd have to be cautious how we define it, because you don't want to say 10 feet of the public right of way, which would and very likely go into at least a number of the initial feet of a driveway, you know, because of the easement. So we'd have to be very cautious about, you know, how we define that. But uh, uh, the chief is absolutely correct. Uh, there's no authority. They have no power to go into a driveway, uh, not with respect to this. This was never intended that. This was to stop individuals from parking in front of mailboxes or parking so close uh, the other problem is people will park so close to the driveway that makes it very difficult to turn in or turn out without hitting the front end or back end of, of the vehicle. So that's what this was intended to. So. Okay. Well, and again, it's, uh, this is the first reading, uh, a simple modification if we so choose uh, at the second reading is not going to hold it up. Uh, uh, 
Yes, if, if, if council does wish to modify, it'd be helpful if we could kind of define what council would like to change so I could have a revised well, I understand. draft. Okay, I understand both sides. I mean, I understand it's pretty, really pretty cut and dry is what it's meant to do. But by the same token, for the purpose of clarity, I can understand uh, the concern that it does not specifically say a roadway. And so it's... Uh, We know that's how it's going to be enforced, but uh, often the public likes a little assurance. So, anyone, any other comments on that issue? I have just a couple of questions, uh, if I may. Have we gotten a lot of complaints, Chief? I would not say a lot. We have had complaints. Are they are they citizens, or is it the post office, or a combination of both, or? It is the citizens. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and how do you envision enforcement happening? Uh, typically with a, any of our parking violations, unless if it's a, a serious hazard at the time, we typically issue a warning uh, the very first time. Then if it's repeated within a reasonable amount of time, we, we could issue a citation. Okay. Which are? And is the 20 feet um, both sides of the, so it's essentially 40 feet from the middle of the, of the uh, mailbox? I would count that, I would count it down the middle, it's 20 feet. You know, as long the length of a vehicle to get in there, be either the LLV or the whatever they're moving to this new van. Yeah, so that's a little confusing. It this is. Actually says says this says 20 within 20 feet, so that'd be both directions. It'd be both directions, yeah. So that'd be 40 yeah. feet. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah, so perhaps that's a lot. We have lots that are no long, more, much, much more than 40 <laughs> yeah, feet. Yeah, I mean, right. that's a lot of, a lot uh, of area. Yeah. That makes sense. So we could define it as 10 feet on either side of the driveway. That goes right along with the previous okay. request. But is, is council okay with the... Make it more clear. And I would just add on the same side of the street, because we do have narrow streets, where hypothetically you can be parked across the street, but still within 20 feet by the letter of the law. Just to clarify, uh, we have this issue in our neighborhood, you know, more narrow streets trying to figure out parking, how to do it, but. The biggest concern that I had was the 20 feet, because that okay. it kind of takes up most of somebody's ability to park in front of their home. So if we went to 10, that I think that would be good. Okay. Makes sense. Any other comments? So 10, 10 feet on either side of the apron of the driveway from the one, one point to the other point of the driveway, not across the street, just the mailbox. Actually, this is the mailbox. It's the mailbox. So we're, we're talking about the mail, the mailbox itself, 17. 10 feet on either side of the mailbox. Okay. okay. Some, right. some streets, the mailboxes are all uniform only on one side. They're not back and forth as well. Well, but I think it, it does say that with the mailbox, I thought council was concerned with the 10 feet on the on the drive, uh, but it's uh, within in front of, so if it's in front of the mailbox or within 20 feet of a mailbox, so. Uh -huh. We're changing that 20 to 10. So that means it'll only be 10 feet. On either, either side, side, which makes up 20. 10 on well, I think that's what it always, but yeah, I get, like, I'll clarify, but I think that's what it always says, because if it's within 20 feet, but if it can be 20 feet on this direction and 20 okay. feet on this direction, still be within 20 feet. Okay. All right. So that's what we want to make sure it's not 40 okay. feet. Okay. We'll feet clarify that. No, no, it's never intended to be 40 feet. All right. Oh, no. okay. Any other comments? All right, Chief, we'll move this, uh, we'll move this on to the second reading, and assuming the changes are very minor, we will, uh, we will, we'll take it up on the second reading. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next is uh, resolution 21 29. Motion. Oh, I guess that's yeah. right. I, was, I just said we were going to do that. So. <laughs> All right, do I have a motion to move uh, 21 16 on to the second reading? To motion to move ordinance 21 16 to the second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. Now, resolution 21 29. We need to read that, please. I jumped the gun. 
Resolution number 21-29, a resolution directing the Greene County Auditor to enter the cost of noxious weeds and grass cutting on the tax duplicate for the properties described in Exhibit A. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Again, uh, you're here to consider resolution 21-29. Um, as you know, we have a grass and weed program um, where any, if we get a phone call, we get somebody complain that there's grass in a yard that's over 10 inches high. Um, you know, we are reactive. We're, we're working on moving to more proactive, but right now we're reactive code enforcement. Um, we get a phone call uh, or somebody, you know, anonymously sending us an email that there's uh, 10 inches of grass or higher, we'll send a code enforcement officer out. And uh, if in fact it is over 10 inches, um, we put a sign out in the yard. Uh, given somebody uh, five days to cut it, typically we use uh, we go back seven days just to give a little bit of a breathing room. But um, there's a five-day window where they need to cut it, and we'll come back and out and reinspect. If they don't cut it, then we hi we have a uh, mowing contractor uh, under contract, and we let them know here's that we need you to go out and mow this yard, um, and then they send us a bill for the amount of time that it takes them to mow. Uh, right now it's $45 an hour and typically we get every lot done in the city with, I mean, every lot that we have to mow is within that one hour time frame. But then there's also a $100 administrative fee uh, added on to that. And so we take the, the, the amount we got from the contract mower plus the $100 administrative fee and forward that on to the property owner as an invoice. Um, typically, uh, you know, we, we see a high percentage of people paying, but um, you know, if we don't hear from them within 30 days, um, then we, we add another assessment fee of $25, um, and those get collected throughout the year. Um, and at the end of the year, and the deadline every year is September 13th, so we have that list, um, and we, t we instruct the, uh, or we have council instruct the, the auditor to place a lien on each of those properties for the amount that's owed. Uh, and the auditor adds a 5% uh, fee of, of their fee on top of that. Um, so you can see um, we've got actually a, a higher uh, correction rate over the years. Um, you know, it was two thirds of the people um, you know, self-correcting once we send them the issue, issue and now we're up to three quarters of the, of the people actually self-correct. Um, but uh, again, we're running around uh, uh, right now there's 26 parcels it, it, many of those are repeat parcels um, so there's a total assessment this year of $6,500 uh, that, that we're asking that um, be forwarded on to the auditor for uh, recovery of the funds that we use to pay the, the contractors as well as recover our administrative fee uh, staff does recommend a, uh, approval of this resolution and I will be happy to answer any questions very good thanks are there any questions, comments? They get a letter as well. Though, as part of the invoice, I mean, they'll get when we send out the issue of violation, they'll get, they'll get a notice, a letter stating what it is, a, a violation note, um, I guess, placard for the best. So at the same time, the sign goes yeah. in. They get the yeah, we let them know what, what's going on. Simply want to say thank you to you and your staff because it's a, a lot of work to enforce this. So thank you. All right. Anyone else? Do I have a motion? Your Honor, I to make a motion to approve 21-29. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 21-29. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries, thank you. Next are liquor permits. Chief, you're on again. <laughs> This is a uh, new liquor permit for the Meyer gas station that's located at uh, 3928 Colonel Glen Highway in Beaver Creek, Ohio. It's, uh, Meyer, it's uh, Meyer Stores LP doing business as their Meyer gas station number 107. This is for a new C2 liquor permit for that location. This one's a little bit different than liquor permits we've done in the past where there's no stakeholders involved with this since it's the Meyer Corporation. So there's actually no background checks to do, but uh, we do not have any uh, type of um, concern or issue with this. Uh, we've got all the proper paperwork from the Division of Liquor Control. We just recommend this application move forward without uh, any further comment or background check on our behalf. Thank you very much. Chief. Motion to accept without comment. 
I have a motion on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. See that one with no comment there, Chief. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. Decision items. First up is, uh, I guess this is really me, the, Day De uh, the Dayton Development Coalition has a community leader fly in on an annual basis. Uh, they did not have it at all last year. They did not have it in the spring this year when they normally have it. Uh, they are planning to have one in September, and we budget for these each year. Uh, the city manager has decided that he will not go this time uh, because there may be one in April again, come, you know, not of next year. Uh, that's part of the reason, I guess. But anyway, uh, and again, between now and September 21st, which is when it is, it could just as easily be canceled. But what I'm asking for tonight is approval of council to expend the money for me to make the trip on the DDC fly-in. Uh, I think the registration was about 16. Something like that. 16 something. It, again, it's budgeted. It's just a matter we have to approve the ex expenditure. So, any questions? Great opportunity to uh, interact with federal officials, most importantly regulators, and also a great opportunity to meet with other uh, mayors and uh, governmental officials. So uh, I'd make a motion to approve it, to Your Honor. Thank you. Second. Okay. Well, I got a motion and a second, and I'll just say that Beaver Creek's been pretty diligent about having a representative present at these, right. and uh, so I appreciate the support. I have a motion and a second uh, to approve the expenditure for the PDC fly-in. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Council time. Let's mix it up. Council Member Dewar, would you like to start? Sure. We could start on one end or the other, but I'm going to mix it up. <coughs> thank you, Mayor. I um, want to thank you and uh, those in the police and the fire for the 9-11 memorial event. Uh, my grandfather was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, and so uh, I think for, for many, um, it's very personal. 2,977 died uh, on that day, an attack on our values here in the United States and in many parts of the world so um, very important to remember and to keep remembering uh, but also uh, I'd like to thank Gussie Jones uh, I think she's she's left now but um, what a wonderful event recently the opening of the ball fields at Owens Place and, and really uh, a true asset to the community uh, so uh, thank you mayor thank you council member Bales Thank you, Mayor. Um, I echo Councilman Dewar's uh, comments. Uh, Gussie Jones has been such an impressive leader in the community, and uh, we are thankful to have her in Beaver Creek and, and all she's done for many organizations, including Owens Place. Uh, since we won't be meeting again until after Labor Day and after the Popcorn Festival, I just want to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday and encourage everyone to come and visit us at the city booth at the popcorn festival very good that's it council member schwartz thank you sir um echo the sentiments of my fellow council members um, in addition the beaver creek township fire department is going to be dedicating station 65 this saturday at 10 o'clock and so kind of going with the theme of fire and you know 9-11 I encourage all of us to go out it's a beautiful beautiful building if you hadn't had a chance to drive by it, it it is definitely gorgeous and it went up very quickly so looking forward to that um, encourage our community to go out and frequent the popcorn festival I think that it will be a good event especially since we were unable to do it last year so hopefully fingers crossed for good weather um, last and certainly not least um, I just wanted to recognize the Beaver Creek Chamber they have been very, very present lately, and they have been doing a lot of great events. Um, not only their chamber links, but they hosted, they co-hosted a women's luncheon uh, last week that I was able to attend, building women in business with um, the Senior Chamber of Commerce. So it was an excellent event, um, and look forward to hopefully having some more of those in the future. That's all, sir. Thank, Thank you. Councilmember Kerr. 
Uh, just wanted to again recognize, I'd say a ditto here to what uh, other council members have said about the 9-11 and certainly <coughs> Owens Place and the other things and encourage people to come out for the 9-11 uh, program, uh, be a part of that uh, very, very important ceremony here in Beaver Creek. And also I would uh, second the uh, Chamber's uh, effort. Uh, they had a wonderful uh, uh, program the other night there at True Hotel on Colonel Glenn and that was really a nice crowd that was there. And, I think everybody enjoyed it very much. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Vice Mayor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Mr. Casera and his staff and the city as a whole for uh, receiving this award again. I know we sometimes think it's uh, just automatic, but we know better than that. There's a lot of work goes into this and uh, keeping all those numbers straight and making sure that they're all correct is a, is a big job, but we thank you for that. I uh, was able to attend the uh, opening day for Beaver Creek Schools here a couple of weeks ago. That was a great program. Uh, I really enjoyed the uh, ventriloquist they had there. He kept, uh, kept it moving pretty well. Uh, also was able to attend the Green Bucks meeting last week, and uh, we were able to recognize two of the winners in the lemonade uh, contest. Uh, the other young lady couldn't make it because she was exposed to uh, COVID, and she was quarantined, so she couldn't make it. They still have not uh, selected the entrepreneur of the year, but uh, I have my, my thoughts who it should be, but I'll keep those to myself until I, I see the results. Uh, was able to attend Fairborn Sweet Corn Festival over the weekend. Wow, yeah. And for those of you that went, it was really hot. Uh, but it was really good to see all the people that were there walking and enjoying the, uh, uh, the event. And I'm looking forward to our popcorn festivals as long as everything stays like it is. I think it should be a really good event. And I echo uh, Councilman uh, Schwartz on the Beaver Creek Township dedicating the new fire station this weekend and celebrating their 75th anniversary, uh, 75 years of service to our community. Even though we as a city have not been here that long, we've benefited from that for, for 75 years. Uh, and I think that's all I have. Thank you, sir. All right. Very good. That must be mayor's time then. I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Council Member Pete Bales for his work at Owens yeah. Place. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Uh, he spent a lot of time and effort and uh, was the architect of a lot of the uh, features there. So, Pete, thank you, and uh, we appreciate it. Uh, the 9 11 event that's coming up uh, before long, it's at 8 30 in the morning, is when it starts. Try to be there before that if you don't mind. We're going to start right on time. Uh, we will, we anticipate a flyover at 840. And so it's, uh, I, I would encourage the public to join us on site. It's down by the bike path for those that don't, wait and don't know. And uh, uh, please come out and uh, pay your respect. That said, I think I will move it on to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I may back up a few slides here. And uh, tonight, uh, just briefly, real quick, I wanted uh, our chief of police, uh, Jeff Fiorita, to come up. We had received a grant, and basically there's no dollar amount, so no beans for Mr. Casera to count, but uh, we wanted to acknowledge uh, the receipt of this grant. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you, sir. Uh, about 18 months ago, Dear Officer Wisecup put in for a uh, grant, more or less a donation, with a company called Spirit of Blue. And they provide training or safety equipment uh, to police officers throughout the United States, namely tourniquets. The tourniquets can be used uh, on yourself and for others that we are working with in, in the, as we carry out our duties. Uh, they have provided to us 51 tourniquets and cases. Uh, and these are all basically donations they get from uh, other companies themselves. So this is something we simply applied for. They have given them, we have not received them yet. However, the one unique thing about this is if a tourniquet's used um, and needs to be replaced, we just simply send them documentation. They'll send us another tourniquet for the time the officer leaves 51 that we have. As you can see, it is a great deal of money. It is a savings to the community and it's something uh, most of my officers are carrying at least two of these. They have them in their carry bags, their first aid kits, plus they carry a couple of them on them themselves as they go about their duties so this will be in addition to that 
and we are thankful for this. It's uh, just something we can always use, and uh, it's one of those things when you we need them, they're they're tremendous. We don't use them that often, thankfully. So, thank, thank you, you, thank you. Cool. Thank you, Chief. Just, just thought we'd share that information. Uh, although, it, again, it wasn't a cash dollar to it. It does end up being cash when you don't have to spend that cash to have the tourniquet. So, good program. Just one of the things that we're always uh, staff is uh, looking at. Uh, for possible grants. Uh, street resurfacing, wanted to give good news that uh, streets uh, included in the 2021 resurfacing program have been completed and under budget. Uh, so the additional streets will be added this year's program. So we're looking and reviewing the list right now for the streets that are expected to be finalized over the next couple of weeks and be posted to the city's website. Those are the alternative streets that we, mm -hmm. we always mm -hmm. talk about. So. Um, I will make a mention too, uh, if you haven't noticed going down Dayton Xenia, that uh, it is very nice and very smooth. I know we have maybe uh, a couple touch ups and get the barrels out of there and it is completed. So uh, both that, that and Kemp Road, I think <laughs> very, very glad to have both of those projects completed this year. <clears throat> and it's already been mentioned, the popcorn festival, so uh, you know the <coughs> Excuse me. Popcorn Festival has mentioned on their website that they've kind of put a disclaimer, you know, on there. I think it, during this time time of COVID, it's always a you know a disclaimer time. But uh, I think they're uh, positively looking forward uh, to the Popcorn Festival, September 11th and 12th, and you see the hours and the 5K run as well, and and a car show on Sunday. And and as somebody said, I don't know if you you mayor, but you know, the city will have a tent. It's a police and city uh, as a whole will both have like two tents there. And we try to staff those. We try to have information about our parks, about the police department, about, you know, all the programs we have. But uh, a lot of the council members and myself uh, will be volunteered to staff uh, the booth. So stop by, ask questions, see us. Uh, you know, comments are always welcome. So please stop and see us at the Popcorn Festival. And we want cooler weather than the corn yeah. yes. the sweet yeah. corn festival. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and as I mentioned, our uh, 20th anniversary, 9/11, uh, 9/11 memorial is the Beaver Creek Station. So, uh, Beaver Creek Station there on uh, North Fairfield Road. So please uh, stop in. It's at 8:30 a.m. I will say that with the popcorn festival going on. Uh, I mean, parking is going to be a premium. There are sidewalks, and you may have to walk and stuff. But if you expect just to pull up at the 911 Memorial Park, you probably will not have access that way. You'll probably be walking. Uh, but uh, it will be a very nice event. And just uh, again, we're not meeting for a few weeks after this, but uh, Labor Day, uh, Monday, September 6th, the city government offices will be closed in observance of Labor Day. And of course, for non-emergency uh, on Monday, that Monday, please call the dispatch 937-426-1225. That's all I have, Mayor. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there, is there anyone here tonight that would like to address council on any issue at all? This is your time to come forward, and if you have something you'd like to uh, make us aware of, you're welcome to do it. Seeing none, we will close that section of the agenda. And I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn, Your Honor. I have several. Did I? There we got You're a singing. second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.